All right, guys, good morning. I am in Nashville, outside of Nashville, I guess, and I am gonna go zip lining today called, at a place called Adventure Works Zip Lining Forest. So we'll see how much fun it is. It's my view right now. I'm early, but I'm always early. Anyways, it's gonna be a hot day today. It's supposed to be break 100, and that's a record down here, up here in Nashville, I guess. Pick the hottest day to zip line, but hopefully, We'll be in some shade and have fun and it's not too hot. So I'm um, looking forward to it. I try to go zip lining everywhere we go on vacation if possible. So beautiful wife's the one that found this place. So hopefully it's fun. Um, I don't know much about it. I know they have like three different locations. This one's called the North one and this one's more zip lining the rope courses. I guess the other ones are more rope courses. So I'm fixing to get out and go walk around and see what I can find out. So hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out even if you don't want to. Please just, just do it. If you're already a subscriber, thank you. If you're new, it just randomly popped up in your little YouTube news feed. Just subscribe. It's free. It helps me. It doesn't really bug you. Anyways, well, we're going to go zip lining and I'll bring you back on when uh, we get going. All right, bye. All right, just got checked in. The lady said there's eight zip lines and a little rope bridge we have to walk across. And there'll be eight other people zip lining with me today, so I won't be all alone. So it's nice. Nice little it's an abandoned restaurant, they said, and their little shack. And then restrooms are in that building, if you're curious. Um, so. It's hot, but actually it's not too bad. I think it's in like the 80s right now. That's what my car said when I got here. So, should be a fun day. At least I'll be in the shade when I'm zipping. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I love zip lining, it's exhilarating. Um, well, I guess uh, after I get all checked in, I think I'm checked in, but like all suited up and stuff, get to the first zip, I'll be back. And I uh, hope you guys uh, like this video. And uh, let me know if you guys ever, what kind of zipline you guys have been on, where you guys have been ziplining, if you guys have been ziplining. Um, maybe I'll go to that place next. Uh, sorry, I'm out of words right now. It's just hot. There's just like one little cloud in the sky. It'd be great, but no. Can't get that lucky. All right, well, I'll come back. Does anybody know who Barbara Mandrell is off the top of their head? Absolutely, yes. to the Mandrell sisters. Okay, I heard one person say yes and everybody else say no, so I'm glad to tell you that uh, Barbara Mandrell, she was a very old country singer back during the Dolly Parton era. I shouldn't say old, she was very popular. But this actually, this whole property used to belong to her. Uh, we're actually on her old driveway right now, and back up ahead, there will be uh, her uh, gigantic log cabin. Um, she lived in there about 2001, and then she sold the property off to John Rich from Big and Rich. He's the guy that opened up the uh, ghost town that we started with uh, in, and um, we, the amphitheater that we just drove past. It was a very popular place that a bunch of big groups were playing, like Fall Out Boy, Imagine Dragons, Hootie and the Blowfish. It was a really cool place to come see live music in Nashville. But unfortunately, they built the Ascend Theater in downtown Nashville. It housed more people. Um, and it was, you know, a lot closer to Broadway. So this place started to get less and less traction. Eventually, John Rich sold the property off to an investment company out of Chicago. They're now the guys that own the property. Uh, they're about four years into a three-year plan to try and turn this place into a glamping resort, basically camping with Wi-Fi. And all they've done so far is fill in about three potholes that they made. So, you know, not bad for construction <laughs> if I say so myself. Yeah. But uh, just around this corner, you'll get to see the beautiful log cabin mansion that uh, Barbara Mandrell used to live in. It's about 30,000 square feet. It's got 13 bathrooms, seven bedrooms, indoor pool that converts to a ballroom dance floor, uh, gun range, uh, ice cream bar, bomb shelter, library, music studio, everything you need to raise your family of three kids. Yeah. Unfortunately, right now it's completely empty. 
nothing's uh, in there but just such a shame because it's an absolutely gorgeous property. I think they're actually selling uh, on, or excuse me, I think it's on the market right now for about $30 million. So if that's spare change that? for you, I highly suggest you buy it, it and do something with it. But let us stay. Yeah, please. Yes, I let them stay. Stop. All right, now it's my turn. Oh. Your safety clip, so it's gonna go right here. Okay. All right, I'm good to clip in. Uh, for you guys with the orange ones, uh, sometimes you might have to give it a little flick like that. Yeah, just double check that it's locked. And then, if you want, whenever you take off, I would recommend stepping down to that step right there. But I'll go ahead and get this for you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I did it wrong, didn't I? That's okay, that's okay. Mm. Oh, whoop! I messed up, didn't I? That you're great. You're great. Confirm, Hosa! Oh! Whoa. Woo! Hi, George! Alright, why don't you do that? It's alright. Okay. That's not that bad. Stay clipped in until I get to Yep. Oh. Whew. Have any words for my YouTube channel? <laughs> so anybody you want to say hello to? Alrighty. Hello, hello. People of the world. Alrighty. Yep, so you're good to head on over. Alright. Hosa! Sweet. Alright, whenever you're ready to clip on in. If you can kind of hop up on this step, probably be a little helpful. There you go. Okay. Not right I just stepped down, right? I feel like I'm doing it wrong before. Yeah. Yep, just take one big step out, push with that back foot. Can I go? Here you got yep, you're all good to go. Woo! Ooh, I didn't land on my butt this time. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh. How was that? Good. Oh, good. I'm glad. That was my favorite so far. Oh, yeah. That one really gets your blood pumping. Woo! Hosa! Hosa is what they say to, when the line's clear. It's something the group made up. So Hosa! far, it's been really fun. Hot, but it's not too bad under the canopy. So there's eight zip lines in total. Nothing too bad so far. This last line I came across, you saw like across a bridge, but a real rope bridge, but it wasn't that bad. So, so this is number three. So we got a few more left. They keep getting longer and longer. So hope you guys enjoying the video so far. And I recommend them. It's fun. Tour guides are fun. He gave a history lesson in the van because he's awesome. So if you do buy that cabin, you got to buy a little shack for him so he can live and still work here please i but need that he needs he needs the job all right well i'm gonna get off here because other people are coming and they said they don't want to be on youtube so i'm trying to follow their wishes oh. like i said before let's make sure we take a nice big jump forward big jump so i can actually get the jump this time you get the jump this time well just hold a second she went to go put the water down, so when she gets back up there, we'll let you go. Whenever you're ready, sir.
very nice landing. Thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Awesome. Whew. Awesome. Number four. Four more to go. Water break. Ooh. I missed that water right there. Okay. Oh, I'm thirsty. Can I go? Keep on going. Yep. Woo! 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 I knew that was gonna happen. Woo! Yeah, right there. Yeah. All righty. How was that? That was good. Is that the longest one? No, that's our second longest one. Oh, I got felt like more. a long one. Oh, so! Whew. Hosa confirm. Yeah, no, this is only uh, this is our second longest and second fastest one. Um, so what's the longest one? The longest one is seven. So that one? No, that's six. We're on five right now. We got three more after this one. I'm gonna watch this person come in and. I'm fixing the trust fall on the zip line. I'm... Do you think I would ask you to do something dangerous and what? stupid? Yes. Well, not stupid. Dangerous, maybe. Yeah, you're right. Alrighty. Shoot up there just like that. I got you from here. Oh my gosh. Alrighty. Before you go, let me unclip you first. Oh yeah. This is not a two for one ride. Whenever you're ready. I don't know if I'm really ever ready. Thank you. Woo. That was fun. Woo. A little scary falling backwards, but the rope caught me. Oh man. Yeah. I'm just talking to my camera. Trying to talk to myself. Oh my goodness, that's fun right there. This one's fun. A little scary, but oh man. Oh, that was fun. That one's the best one so far. I think our next one's the longest. So that should be fun. Hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. At the end, it's basically like a brake and it attaches to your trolley so that you can't roll back outwards. It's not gonna hit you or do anything, but it does make a really loud noise. So it might be a little bit alarming, but it's totally fine. Just the zip key. Just the zip key. Yep, nothing to be worried about. Hang out right there for me. Alright, go ahead and get your clipped in right here. Okay. Sweet. Beautiful. Alrighty. Go Does jump get... this time or? Uh, just take a big step off for me. Just like we have been. Alright. Yeah. Alrighty. That brake scared me a little bit. Yeah, but it's there to help you stop. That's the most important part. Okay. There Ooh. you go. Oh boy. That's a quarter mile long, right? You said? Yep. Ooh, that was a quarter mile. Oh, so. Ooh, that was fun. 
go about 40 miles an hour, 30 to 40 miles an hour. Oh my goodness, that was fun. That was my, I think number seven or number six is my favorite. Seven, maybe second. Oh, I like it. It's fun. It's not too bad in the shade. All right, one more zip line, then we'll be done. Film why one comes through. Alrighty, got this up there. Let me take this off of you first. Oh, yeah, you don't want to come with me? Uh, not yet, not Whoa. quite. Whoa. Careful. You don't want to do that yet. to Lynchburg, Tennessee, and there's clouds. Look at the clouds. Oh, didn't think I would ever be so happy to see clouds. Okay, sorry. Uh, there's a lady telling us there's a shuttle. So there's a shuttle, parking lot, shuttle. We don't want to cross the road. So we're here, we're gonna do a distillery tour. Um, it's a dry county, so you can't sample unless you paid extra, and we didn't pay extra because we didn't know how it all worked. 
So we are gonna get on a shuttle to go over there and then uh, see if we can uh, film and film while we're on the tour, but I'm guessing we're not allowed to. What do you guys think? Comment below, pause the video, comment below, and then restart the video to find out. All right, well, I'll see you when uh, we get to do something cool. All right, we got checked in and we can film on the tour a little bit. So I will film until I'm told not to, but have a little cool little museum of all little trinkets and Jack Daniels memorabilia. You can see. It's a cool little town. Have a little shuttle that will shuttle you over to the visitor center and take you to the downtown where they have a gift shop and stuff. So. If you ever come down to Lynchburg, I suggest you come here. It's really nice that we didn't have a tour until four, but they let us get in early. So that's awful nice of them, in my personal opinion. I guess that's a map where all they distribute from. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. This goes over how everything's made. All the different kind of bottles from different kind of years. There's music playing, so hopefully I can mute it somehow so I can still talk. Alright, well, when we get on the tour, I'll pop back on. is just zoomed in right there on those hoods um, and it's time lapse. So they start with four ricks of maple. They light it up with 140 proof moonshine straight off of our steel because if we used anything else you would taste it. <laughs> it will burn about an hour and a half. It'll get up to about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now Darren and Tracy don't have to sit up here the whole entire time it's burning. They just have to make sure they're back up here at the right time to put the fire out and that is where the art takes place. Um, all they use is water hoses, but if they did too much water too fast, you would get wet up burned wood. Too little water too late, you're going to get a pile of ashes. So, I mean, it does have to be the right amount of water at the right time to get charcoal. It takes them like 30 minutes to get it put out. So, from the time they start the fire till the time they actually have charcoal is about two hours for each, each burn. And so, then they'll scoop all the charcoal up. They take it to the building beside us over here where it, where it usually sits overnight and then they run it through a grinder to make a smaller, more uniform size piece. It'll go in the tank out there. It don't stay in there long. I mean, we're only making charcoal when we need to change out a mellowing bath. So they hop on a tractor and pull right up underneath there, load it up full of charcoal, and then haul the charcoal up to charcoal mellowing where they'll change out the mellowing bats. Now we see that room later. We'll see charcoal mellowing. Our mellowing bats look a lot like this, only much bigger. Um, our mellowing bats are 14 feet tall with 10 feet of charcoal packed down in there. We've got 72 of them. Now, like I said, we only make charcoal when we, when we need to change out a mellowing bat. That charcoal lasts like 10 months to a year. Um, so it's probably a good thing that we're not having to change out 72 mellowing bats a week or anything like that. But uh, they're still pretty busy burning because they have to burn four times or 16 bricks just to fill one mellowing bat. So even if we're only changing out one or two a week, we're still making charcoal three or four days a week. Uh, typically it is twice a day, early in the morning, Monday through Friday. So we'll talk more about charcoal mellowing later. Uh, when we
make my way to Nashville very often. It, I'm not a big city girl, that's a little overwhelming for me. So, no, but I, we just, we didn't see stuff like coming down here or anything. I have no idea. And I don't have money. I really don't know. We just got the NFL team looking at the there. It seems like. Well, and I think because hockey is kind of new to yeah. us, um, that may be one thing. But a lot of people that I know, especially in this area, don't really support a lot of like professional sports, period. Yeah. Uh, most people that I know are college sports. His old desk, huh? Mm -hmm. Jack Daniels' old desk. Here, Kelsey, can you take some pictures? So we have a photo of every master distiller that we've had, except for the first one. The only person we do not have a picture of is nearest green. Unfortunately, it just does not exist. So the closest thing that we have is this photo. Jack Daniel is standing right in the middle of it. He had this made about 1904. Sitting to his right is George Green, which is the oldest son of Nearest Green, so he represents his dad as our first master distiller. Now, after him would have been our founder, Jack Daniel, Jack's nephew, Jess Motlow, which is Lim Motlow's brother, Jack's great nephew, Lim Tolly, Jess Gamble, Frank Bobo, Jimmy Bedford, Jeff Arnett, and now our current master distiller is Chris Fletcher. He became our master distiller about two years ago. He had worked under Jeff Arnett for six years as our first ever assistant distiller. And when Jeff left, they named Chris our new master Where did distiller. he go to? He went to open his own distillery. So it's called Company Distilling in East Tennessee. Um, so Chris, it was, it was pretty a proud moment for him. His grandfather was Frank Bobo. So Chris is a generational employee doing the exact same job that his grandfather did here for years. You know, And his assistant distiller, Lexi Phillips, is a generational employee. She's actually the first female that's ever done that role. And we've got like 650 employees. Two thirds of us have a family member that works here. My oldest son works here. My mama works here. My uncle works here. I have like 20 cousins that work here. So yeah. three generations is really common. There's a lot of fourth, fifth, sixth, even seventh generation employees here. In fact, from the time that Jack had hired Nearest Green to now, there's always been members of the Green family working here. There's always been someone related to Jack working here. So really the same families that started out making this whiskey together back in the 1800s been making it together the whole time. Well, we're going to cut through this room right here. You'll see those instruments from the Sears uh, Roebuck catalog. That is a photo of the band using them down on our town square back in the 1800s. finished my tour it was great I filmed a little bit the parts I could so hope you guys enjoy the footage now we're at the bottle shop 
where you can take a bottle with free stuff inside of it. Just kidding. And get engraved. I'm getting mine engraved. And you guys will see the special message I put in the, on the side of the bottle when we're done. Overall, if you're in Nashville or in Tennessee in general, I suggest you come on down do the tour. It's really friendly. They're really friendly, knowledgeable. Um, now we're going to go to, the, after I get my bottle back, we're going to go to the general store and buy some Jack Daniel merchandise and then head back for some dinner at Nashville. And then tomorrow we got a golf cart tour. And so I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's been a fun day and uh, I had fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the video along with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey right, guys, sorry, I forgot to mention this as I was leaving. Uh, after the tour, you can buy a bottle. You're buying the bottle, not the contents inside. Also, when after you get your bottle, you can get it engraved. And look what I got engraved. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that. See that? Fancy. And then my dog ranger. So I recommend this place if you're in Nashville and want to know how whiskey's made. I mean, it's it's not that hard. I mean, I couldn't do it. But uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, see you guys on the next one.